Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is my pleasure to be your host uh, on this program, which is uh, about uh, the commemoration of 80 years since the program of Eucharist. Uh, we are truly thankful to our partners, Israel Museum and the Romanian Cultural Institute Tel Aviv, for uh, being with us and for bringing this valuable contribution to the remembrance of those tragic days uh, and to paying tribute to the work of an Israeli artist uh, of Romanian origin, uh, Marcel Bianchi. Uh, I would like, uh, first of all, to thank very much uh, the speakers uh, from today, Professor Ido Bruno, the director of the Israel Museum, Dr. Amitai Mendelssohn, the senior curator for Israeli art at the Israel Museum, uh, Mrs. Michaela Mende Yanku, uh, the granddaughter of uh, Marcel Yanku, and uh, Dr. Vlad Solomon, who is a researcher and writer who dedicated a lot of time to the art and to the life of uh, Marcel Yanku. Uh, I am uh, very sorry that we were not able to do. Uh, this public event uh, at a uh, very beautiful uh, location of the Israel, Israel Museum, but uh, uh, Corona is Corona, the context is context, and we need to be needed to do this online event. We are going to invite you today to a journey through the history of the program of Eucharist, but also of the visual work of Marcel Yanko. Uh, you will be able to follow uh, uh, these tragic events uh, uh, between uh, the 21st and 23rd of January 1941, when uh, Bucharest was a scene of uh, massacres of Jews and destruction of uh, Jewish uh, properties. And you will also witness how this pogrom, which was basically a Romanian crystal mark, and there is no exaggeration when I'm saying this, uh, influence the artwork of Marcel Yanku and uh, how he later became a leading presence in the Israeli, uh, uh, Israeli art. I would like uh, at this point to give uh, the virtual floor to Professor Ido Bruno, who will give uh, us uh, the introductory remarks. Thank you. Professor Bruno. Thank you. Thank you, Adrianit. Thank you very much. Um, good evening to everyone. I'm honored to open this important symposium commemorating 80 years since the Bucharest pogrom. Uh, during the 20th century, especially between the two world wars, Romania was one of the most important centers of Jewish culture. Jewish Romanian artists stood at the forefront of avant-garde artistic movements, creating iconic works of art with everlasting power. One of these artists, Marcel Yanko, was born in Bucharest in 1895, was one of the founders of Dada Zurich, and his life and work will be a focus of this evening's discussion. In 2012, the Israel Museum presented the exhibition Jewish Avant-Garde Artists from Romania, curated by Dr. Adina Kamil Kashdan, Senior Curator of Modern Art. The exhibition presented works by Yanko, Tristan Tsara, Victor Browner, Arthur Siegel, and many more, exemplifying the contribution of Romanian Jewish artists and poets to modernist culture and introducing this important chapter of art history to our local and international audiences. This is an appropriate opportunity to mention a few of the other important Israeli artists who were born in Romania. Uven Rubin, who besides being an acclaimed Israeli artist was the first Israeli ambassador to Romania in 1948. Avigdor Aricha, Philip Ranzer, Tzvi Goldstein, and Belo Simeon Fainaro were exhibited in the Romanian pavilion at the 2019 Venice Biennale. Romanian-born citizens have also left their mark on numerous other spheres of Israeli society. And may I add a personal note, my wife's family has significant Romanian roots, so I even have a personal uh, connection. I would like to thank His Excellency, Excellency Mr. Radu Ioannid, Ambassador of Romania to the State of Israel, for reaching out and for our pleasant cultural discussions May there be many more. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for creating the cultural setting for this important discussion about Marcel Yanko and his personal connection with the Bucharest pogrom. 
I would like to thank Ms. Mi uh, Ms. Michaela Mendel-Yanko, representative of the Yanko family, Dr. Vlad Salomon, the Romanian Culture Institute in Tel Aviv, and Ms. Monica Magaon of the Embassy of Romania in Israel, and of course, Dr. Amitai Mendelssohn, our senior curator of Israeli art, who will be sharing his knowledge and insights with us today. I'd also like to thank the Israel Museum team, especially Omar Tzu, who organized the event on behalf of the Israel Museum. So I wish all of us a very fruitful evening of discussion and hope to see you all very soon at the Israel Museum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bruno, for your um, very, very kind words, which clearly are coming from your heart. Uh, truly, truly appreciated. And I will also hope that uh, this is only the beginning of a fruitful and long uh, cooperation. Let me kindly ask you to permit me to say a few words about the program of Eucharist. Um, but first, I'd like to say only two words about Marcel Young. Marcel Young was ready to emigrate to Palestine before the pogrom. And the pogrom added a very tragic uh, background to his intentions because his brother-in-law uh, was killed uh, during this pogrom. Uh, was killed in an awful way, uh, like many other Jews, like 123 Jews who were uh, victims of this problem. You will hear more about this uh, undoubtedly during the following presentations, but I wanted to, you to understand that the connection is through the tragic fate of his family. Uh, I lost my own image here. I'm communicating this to my colleagues because I don't see myself. Oh, I see why. Because there is a, uh, uh, thank you very much. There is a series of images from the pogrom and images of drawings of Marcel uh, which will follow during my uh, presentation. Let me try as a historian of the Romanian Holocaust to uh, describe for you in a few words the uh, setting of this pogrom. On 6th of September 1940, an alliance between uh, General Ion Antonescu, later Marshal, and the Iron Guard uh, took over power in Romania through a coup d'etat. Uh, it was a short lived alliance between a general, a fascist general of the Romanian army. Ion Antonescu and the Iron Guards. Short lived because the Iron Guards were more radical and more Nazi oriented uh, than Antonescu. Not that Antonescu will not remain a faithful ally of Nazi Germany during the fall period of the war. Uh, the conflict during the very few months until January 1941. Uh, the, the alliance, this alliance between Ion Antonescu and the Iron Guard was frail, was weak. And interestingly enough, this is not very well known. Uh, each of these factions were at the helm of the power in Romania had its own backers in Berlin. Ion Antonescu was supported by um, Adolf Hitler and the Wehrmacht. Hitler was interested in the Romanian oil and in the Romanian army because he was eyeing uh, the future war against the Soviet Union. And uh, the Iron Guards were backed by Himmler and by the SS and SD. And obviously, uh, during the pogrom, uh, 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 which was actually also a coup d'etat of the Iron Guards against Antonescu, uh, the Iron Guards were supported, as I said, by the SS, but the German army, which was stationed in Bucharest, supported Ion Antonescu and his government. Ion Antonescu crashed the Iron Guard rebellion, but not before. Uh, 123 Jews were killed 
in Bucharest, most of them in the Jilava forest, and you already saw images from these uh, killings, awful killings, uh, but also in other uh, places in uh, the city, in the capital city. The Jews, many, many other Jews were tortured. Uh, thousands of uh, Jewish apartments, Jewish uh, stores, Jewish properties, and dozens of synagogues were destroyed, a couple of them being burned to the ground. Uh, it is important to emphasize that uh, the program of Bucharest is one of the first, not truly the first, but one of the first major events of the Holocaust in Romania, which will uh, continue until uh, the summer of 1944, when the Antonescu government will be overthrown. Uh, according to the Bizel report, which was endorsed by the Romanian successive governments, post-communist governments, and presidents, at least 280,000 uh, Romanian and Ukrainian Jews were killed by the Romanian fascist authorities. I'm not counting here the victims from Northern Transylvania, Jewish victims from Northern Transylvania who were murdered by the Hungarian government in alliance with Nazi Germany. I will stop here by paying tribute to the victims of this uh, pogrom, uh, underlining that they were killed simply because they were Jews. Um, uh, emphasizing, emphasizing the fact that the savagery of the perpetrators was difficult to be matched uh, during the whole uh, period of World War II. Uh, although the Iron Guard was uh, forbidden after this uh, attempt of coup d'etat, the Iron Guards remained in one capacity or another uh, involved in the uh, killing of the Romanian Jews on in various places in uh, Moldova, in Bessarabia, in Transnistria, uh, for the whole period of the war. I thank you for your patience. And I would like to invite now Mrs. Michaela Mende Yanku, the granddaughter of uh, Marcel Yanku, to tell us the story of her family and to share with us some of her memoirs about Marcel Yanku. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Mr. Yoannid, and um, also Mr. Bruno for organizing this uh, event. Um, all the other important speakers, Mr. Solomon, Mr. Mendelssohn, um, and uh, respected audience. Um, I'm speaking here today of the offspring of the Yanku Goldschlager family from Bucharest, Romania, to tell some of the story of our particular Holocaust that took place exactly 80 years ago. Uh, my family was at the heart of cultural and intellectual life of Bucharest in the 1930s. My grandfather, Marcel Yanko, later known as Yanko, was an artist of international renown, and together with his brother, Jules, Julius Yanko, ran a distinguished architectural firm called Fred Bianco, or however you um, pronounce it, uh, Brothers Bianco. Uh, my grandmother's brothers um, were Jacques Costin, playwright and author, and Michu Michael Goldschlager, an opera singer. Uh, in the late 1930s, anti-Semitism raised its ugly head in Romania. My grandfather, slapped a colleague who came to his vernissage and remarked out loud, great works, too bad you're a Jew. Uh, during the Bucharest pogrom, uh, Michael Goldschlager, uh, my grandmother's younger brother, was abducted by the Romanian fascist forces, the Iron Guard, and much money was demanded as ransom. 
when my grandfather arrived hastily, hastily with a suitcase full of money to release him, he found to his chagrin and horror Michel's mutilated body hanging from a butcher's hook and on it allegedly a note stating kosher. My grandfather was already aware of the danger and planned to flee to Palestine. After this horrible trauma, I took his wife, Clara, my grandmother, and two daughters, Josephine and Theodora Diana, my mother, and they fled as refugees uh, from what they considered um, until then to be their country and homeland. Upon arriving to Palestine in 1941, my grandfather was haunted by what he saw and by the news flooding in from Europe, telling about deportation, abuse, and murder of his people. He drew some of what he saw and what he had imagined. Nobody wanted to see those images up until the 1990s, after my grandfather's death, when they were exhibited in the Yankudada Museum in Enhod, in the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, uh, in Jerusalem and several other distinguished venues. Uh, we are just one family out of hundreds of thousands of families whose lives have been forever changed by the trauma traumatic loss of their loved ones to hatred crimes. We will do whatever is in our power to pass on the memory. My name is Michaela after my great uncle Mishu. I was born in Israel, yet I carry his memory with me wherever I go. May his soul and all souls of victims of the pogrom, which took their innocent lives violently exactly 80 years ago, be blessed. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Mende Yanku, for this very powerful and obviously emotional uh, presentation. Uh, let me add something about which I care personally a lot. Uh, there are dozens and dozens of buildings in Bucharest which were uh, created uh, by Marcel Yanku. And uh, very few people know about them, but uh, they are wonderful, and uh, I think that more should be done about letting the Romanian public and the Israeli public about these pieces of art which are still around. Uh, I am going to kindly invite uh, Dr. Amitai Mendelssohn, the senior curator for Israeli art at the Israel Museum, to show us a different perspective on uh, the work of uh, uh, Marcel Young. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to just uh, share my screen. I hope it's possible. One second. Yes, okay. Um, okay. First of all, it is a great honor for me to be part of this morning's conference. I would like to thank Ambassador Mr. Yaunid, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Michaela Mendelianko of the Yanko family, Monica Magon. It was a pleasure to be in touch with you on this conference, Monica. And of course, uh, all people involved in this important uh, discussion and our staff in the Israel Museum. Marcel Yanko's artistic career is an outstanding and unique one. We can roughly divide it to his Romanian Swiss period and to his Israeli period after arriving in Palestine in 1941. His approach to art, his style and artistic language changed in a dramatic and most intriguing way between these two periods. It is almost true to say that there are two Yankos, the abstract avant-garde constructivist Dada artist of the early period from 1915 until the mid or late 1920s, 
who was interested in form, structure, and the revolutionary shifts of ideas concerning the role of art in the wake of First World War, and the Yanko of the 1930s and later, especially after arriving in Palestine in 1941, who took a less radical and abstract route and turned to figurative or partly figural paintings and had a direct contact with daily life, national issues, and the human tragedy that was brought forth by wars, refugees, ruin, and death of young lives. Yanko's artistic career is unprecedented in the history of Israeli art. There is no other Israeli artist who, had such, who was such a central figure in Europe's modernistic artistic revolution. And Yanko was one of the founding members of the Dada movement, who later came to Israel and became a major force in the local art scene. This puts Yanko in a very important and special position in the history of Jewish and Israeli art. It also raises questions about his shift in style and his approach to the role of the artist. I would like to start with a short review of works by Yanko in the Israel Museum collection. Yanko is one of the very few artists in the museum's collection whose work is divided into two departments, the modern art department and the Israeli art department, both equally important in his art. Uh, most Israeli artists of the first half of the 20th century came from Europe, mostly from Eastern Europe, and worked part of their life outside of Israel, mainly in Paris. This is true for the biggest and most famous names of Israeli art, Ruven Rubin, who was born in Galatz, Southeast Romania, Nahum Gutman, born in uh, uh, Sarabia, Yosef Zaritsky, born in the Ukraine, and many others. Mordechai Ardon is the only artist, aside from Yanko, who had, uh, who touched the very heart of modernist revolution as a student in the Bauhaus in the 1920s. But Ardon was a mere student of Clay and Kandinsky, while Yanko was a prominent and central figure in the Dada Zurich movement, equal in his importance to artists and poets such as Jean Arp, Tristan Zara, and Hugo Ball. The first work I would like to present is The Tightrope Walker from 1915. Oh, I have no date here, it's 1915, a very early masterpiece uh, uh, made in the year that Yanko arrived to Zurich. This painting, done when Yanko was nearly 20, shows the great influence of his work uh, on his work by Cubism, Futurism, and Expressionism. The work shows a lively and somewhat dangerous dynamic and is a profound sense of color and movement. Another work of this time, uh, Ball in Zurich, 1917, depicts the famous Cabaret Voltaire, the cafe nightclub where the Dada group was founded and where all the acti their activities were performed. In this depiction, we see how aware Yanko was of cubism and futurism and how able he was to make a painting that is musical and dynamic, figurative and abstract at the same time. A few more examples we have in our collection are, are these wonderful uh, 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 drawings from Cabaret Voltaire, 1916, a beautiful portrait of Tristan Sara from 1916, and of course, the famous masks uh, uh, that Yanko produced in uh, the Dada period, 1919, one of them of Tristan Sara, another untitled. Uh, these masks were a profound uh, revolution in, in art history and are known throughout uh, uh, the world. Uh, other examples of his uh, uh, a bit later work in, in Bucharest after coming back from Zurich in, in the uh, periodical Contemporo Ranul and, and uh, works from the 1920s, all in the collection of the Israel Museum. Another one of these. Anti-Semitism was an integral part of Romanian history, especially from the end of the 19th century with the rise of Romanian nationalism. The Jews were seen as alien strangers, and much like Wagner's ideas in Germany, Alexander Cusa, the famous Romanian fascist leader, wrote that Jews cannot in any way become true Romanian artists since they do not understand Romanian spirit and fake the true character of Romanian culture. These were very prominent anti-Semitic ideas at the time. The presence of so many Jews in the avant-garde movements of Romania and in the neo and in the Dada Zurich movement in particular was explained as a danger as a danger to the national cause and as decadent. It may be no coincidence that Dada was actually found in neutral Zurich and not in Bucharest. In a statement that was targeted against the, the racial and national ideas in popular, so popular in Romania, Yanko later wrote, 
The work of art is by its essence without sex, nationality, or religion. These are, of course, the depictions of the pogrom uh, of 1941, uh, some of them we saw earlier. As a result of World War I, Romania expanded hugely, annexing regions such as Basarabia, Bukovina, and Transylvania. As a result, nationalism, anti-universalism, and of course, anti-Semitism was very much on the rise. After the war ended in 1919, Yanko uh, returned to Romania and maintained a leading role in the avant-garde movement, as I said before. Uh, he turned more and more to uh, constructive uh, art, as we've seen in these works, uh, abstraction, and the art uh, Yanko produced and promoted in this period was devoid of figurat con figurative content or stories. This direction shifted during the late 1920s and 1930s when figuration became a more central part of his work. As nationalism was on the rise, Yanko made his first trip to Palestine in 1939, uh, described and he described in this letter himself as a Moses returning to his people. Very dramatic. Anti-Semitic uh, incidents that occurred in this time took their tone on his life. And as was mentioned before, in the opening of his last exhibition in Bucharest in 1939, his fellow contributor to Contim uh, Naul, poet Yon Barbu, uh, who became a member of the Iron Guard, uh, congratulated him as a great painter, but added, what a pity you are a Jew. But what brought Yanko to the final decision to move to Palestine was the horrible torturing and killing of his brother-in-law, Mishu Volchlager, in the Bucharest pogrom. In the beginning of February, he left for Palestine. Um, I will, uh, okay. Um, this is a, a work uh, made in Palestine, but uh, uh, remembering the horrible scenes of the, uh, of the um, pogrom in uh, 1941. This is a work called Genocide in 19, from 1945. Of course, very much influenced by Picasso's Guernica from uh, 1937, a huge influence that later became very prominent in uh, Yanko's work. After arriving in, in Palestine, Yanko swiftly became one of the young country's major artistic forces. In 1948, he founded uh, the New Horizons Group with painters like Zaritsky, Streichmann, and Stimatsky, and, uh, and the most advanced and abstract group of artists in Israel. These artists did not depict in their work anything that had a direct re relation to national events, symbols, or historical and biblical themes. Even though his history was uh, revolutionary and abstract at its core, Yanko found this to be impossible to maintain in the situation he found in Israel. The independence war brought the death of many young lives and some of Yanko's most memorable works from these years deal with the theme of the wounded or dead soldier in an unprecedented way in the local art scene. These were not heroic or victorious soldiers such as uh, we see on the left. This is a poster from, from this period uh, and we see the difference between Yanko's wounded soldier and this strong Israeli soldier uh, uh, guarding the state of Israel. Uh, these were not heroic, but uh, weak and fallen soldiers. His work derived inspiration from modernist art, from Picasso, but also from Christian sources. Uh, and, uh, and we see that in many, many works of this time, especially around the independence war of 1948. Um, here we see in our uh, uh, permanent exhibition in the Israel Museum, uh, Yanko's uh, uh, work on the right-hand side and a work of a contemporary Israeli photographer showing a soldier in 1988 in, uh, in uh, Israel in a conflict situation in the West Bank. Um, <clears throat> other depictions of the soldiers wounded from the same period. This was a theme that, that uh, touched uh, Yanko very, very strongly. Uh, and uh, in these depictions of, uh, of the soldiers, uh, like in Guernica, uh, Yanko's focus was on the two final realness of death as a tragic result of hatred and war. And maybe here too, reminiscing the horrible scenes that he saw in uh, Bucharest pogrom. Uh, this is a poster that Yanko made for the first exhibition of the New Horizons group in 1948. But during the 1950s, Yanko was a major part of the New Horizons group and was chosen to represent Israel in the 1952 Venice Biennale. 
Although the group's orientation became more abstract, Yanko continued to paint what he saw around him, not necessarily the ideal and the beautiful Israel, but such topics as the troubled and strained nation <clears throat> struggling with a huge wave of immigration housed in terrible conditions in Ma'abarot, uh, transit camps in the 1950s. Yanko depicted the good and the bad, the daily and the tragic. He did not idealize reality. In his, uh, this is a burning village from 1953, again, reminiscing the, the independence war. In 1953, he formed uh, the artist village Ein Hod uh, uh, near Haifa. This village still exists until today, a beautiful location where artists work in Yanko's uh, uh, spiritual legacy. The village was built on homes of Arabs who were not allowed to return after the war, uh, uh, but they did build a village nearby. Yanko was aware of this tragedy. And though he was the founder and head of Ein, Ein Hod Artist Village, he felt the pain of the refugees who had to leave their homes and painted the village with its original residents leaving it, as we see here in, in, this, uh, in this work from 1954. Uh, to summarize my talk, Yanko was a man of contrast. At once a revolutionary artist, a founder of Dada, who believed in pure abstract art, and on the, on the other hand, depicted the Israeli landscape he loved and participated through his art in the struggle of the young state of Israel. An advocate of abstraction and involved in contemporary avant-garde, yet socially committed, humanism and social issues seem to play an essential role in his art. The shift in his life that took place uh, in the wake of Romanian anti-Semitism anti and, the, and the pogrom of Bucharest made him choose to become an Israeli Jewish artist and to a certain extent, leave his revolutionary and international inclinations of the years before. His humanism and Zionism took the place of the pure abstract Dada universalistic uh, approach uh, that, that art has no nation. Yanko's fascinating artistic career shifted between these two poles, abstraction and humanism, and maintained a fine and unique balance between both. Thank you very much. Dr. Mendelssohn, I am truly grateful to you for this very powerful and in-depth presentation about Marcel Yanko. Uh, let me tell you that I learned a lot from this presentation and I hope that I'll be able to meet with you again under better circumstances and we'll be able, I'm sure, to uh, continue our dialogue personally and institutionally too. Uh, I am Thank going. You to, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, I am going to uh, invite uh, our colleague and friend, Dr. Vlad Solomon, uh, who is a talented uh, researcher and writer, to present to us a different side of Marcel Yanku as a Jew, as a, and as a Zionist artist. Uh, Mr. Dr. Solomon, you have the floor, please. Okay, thank you. So I will present uh, only a part, a slide of a lecture that uh, I, uh, I presented in 2010 at the Tel Aviv, at the Jerusalem University, Marcel Yanku, Jewish Identity and Zionism. Well, Marcel Yanku, as we know, he began his artistic career directly on an international level at Dada at Cabaret Voltaire. It is undoubtedly that he has a central figure to introduce avant-garde art to Romania. And he brought also the modern architecture to Bucharest. Marcelenko is a Jew, as many other avant-garde artists and writers in Romania in the interwar period. I would evoke the dilemma of his identity, a permanent problem during his whole life. <clears throat> so I will use documents that I received from Daddy Yanku, Zichron Ali Vracha, who gave me in order to present them even in 2010, his daughter. Now you see three different uh, Marcel Yanku in Dada in, uh, during the Romanian period, and during the Israeli period. Now I'll present a document who proves that Marcel Yanku began Romanian citizen 
only in 1923, due to the constitution before that from 18, uh, 1895 till 1923, he was not a Romanian citizen. He has mosaic origin. This is an extract of the birth certificate, a copy. And here you find also the marriage and the divorce from his first wife is also mentioned. The date is 18 July, 1939. It's very important this date because it proves that he prepared all the emigration before the pogrom of Bucharest. You see here also the naturalization certificate from May 10, 1923, to, uh, together with uh, his wife, Micheline, his first wife, and uh, Claude Simon, his first daughter, who died later. Another certificate, very important to prove that, is the, this one for the school of, uh, the, of his daughter, Josine Cécile, for the school of Notre Dame de Sion. It's written also that only 1923 he received the citizenship. But during the, all his period or in Romania, when he came back in 1922, he was in contact, in contact with the Jewish world and with the Zionist ideas. At the 11th Zionist Congress from Vienna, they decided in 1930 to create an Hebrew university in Jerusalem. And the foundation was in April 1, 1925 on Scopus Mount, Har Atzofim. On this occasion, the artists from uh, Jerusalem asked to the artists from all over the world of Jewish origin to, uh, to make festivals and that in order to contribute money for functioning of the new scholarly institution. And they did a magazine in this occasion, Puntea de Fildes, the Ivory Bridge. What is written there? The Jewish artists and writers who are gathering in the flowering country near Jerusalem make a call to Jewish writers from all countries asking them to organize everywhere on the same day a festival whose benefits to serve the practical realization in Palestine at the moment of the opening of the new university. In April 11, 1925, the Jewish artists and writers from Romania organized a cultural evening. Uh, I will say some nam names uh, for the Romanian uh, are very significant. Uh, for example, Fondan, Fundoianu, uh, Emil Dorian, uh, Regis, Camil Baltazar, Ion Pribeagu, and uh, the cover was, is of Marcel Iancu, you see here, the cover of Marcel Iancu. And also Maxi uh, gave a, a big participation. Very important in it something, it's an essay of Marcel Iancu, the rebuilding of Palestine. He says that if the rebuilding of Palestine has a problem, he's done darkly architecture. We began to begin uh, to build, we began to build without a plan, and in spite of any excuses we may find, we cannot hide the Orientalism. It is unforgivable this vice. It is against the Oriental method, because we want, he says there in this essay, a new ideal and modern country. And you have to have the, a social urbanist architecture for the future generation. It's very important that he use the pronoun ui which expresses his identification with the Jewish people and with the Zionist vision of Palestine modernization. But later when he came to Palestine, he found an harmony between the Oriental and the modern element. Let's go uh, after that because we'll see only, only, only after one year, another Punta de Fildes, Ivory, Irony Bridge, uh, Ivory Bridge, uh, who uh, shows the link between, between the communities of the Jews from Romania with the Jews from Palestine. And here you'll find two important things. First of all, we find the Bali in Zurich that Mr. Mendelssohn showed it before that we have in the Israel Museum. We find it in this number in 1926. It was in collection of Ellenbogen in this time. And later we find 
something even more important, the, of course, the cover is of Marcel Yanku, a project of a villa for Palestine from 1926 made for Marcel and Jules Yanku, he or his brother. And uh, uh, it's a uh, archetype of his villa. Um, we have text, two texts of Marcel Yanku, very important. One of them is My Art and Zionism. It was published much later in Israel in 1980, uh, in Shevet, Romania, number 89 from September 1980. He says about his period in Romania of 30 years, after the 30s. Um, I always live among my family as a free man, never, now aware, in Romania or in another part of Europe, in peacetime or during the cruel years of the war, no one asked me if I was a Jew or a kaik. In Romania, the term is Zidan. And after that, he spoke about, in this text, My Art and Zionism, he speaks about uh, this uh, years of antisemitism in Romania in the 30s, and uh, about this meeting with uh, Ion Barbu. This is exactly word by word. Full of admiration, enthusiastic because of the beauty of the words of one of my best shows, he came to congratulate me, but his compliments changed in an unacceptable insult. What a pity you are a kite, again, Zidan. I reacted promptly with a swear and I told him that he was only Armenian. This was the first signal that he said here in the same text, I felt that a call in my soul. Uh, this event awoke me to a really what a free man and my family was uh, one option only, to return to my people. But he speaks in the same text about the consolation in a farm of Boudin, that he has together with the great poet Jacques Costin, he found a Zionist movement of Beitar, uh, led by Yaakov Schieber, close to Vladimir Jabotinsky, who made what he, he called Akshara, training for emigration to Palestine. On January 21, 1938, the law, the racial law of the government Goga Fuza, uh, compels the Jews to reclaim citizenship. The necessary documents to reclaim the citizenship were many, and the time was very short. One third of the Jews from Romania lost their citizenship. Now I will show you uh, the new certificate of the citizenship from June 14, 1938, that proves that speaks that me, uh, Marcel Yanku is born in Romania. He received the citizenship in 23. And uh, also he did the army in, from November 30, 1916. And this is the doc military document. But this document is fake because in 1916, November 16, Marcel Yanku is in Syria with the data movement. That proves the humiliation the Jews had to have in this period in order to have the citizenship. So segregated in 1938, the same year when Victor Browner left, Marcel Yanko made an exploratory trip to Palestine. And here we have the letter from the boat where he spoke about feeling like Moses, I'm a true Moses, and also I am going to the cradle of our people, the Mediterranean. It seems that's all in vitas. The misfortune of these people, he says in this letter, could be his salvation. Any solution should be definitive. I am fed up with the old Komsampip Europe, uh, the Sikh Europe, Uber Air in Jerusalem. This is Marcel. It because it was before Rosh Hashanah, he wrote that in Yiddish. After that, he, he went away with 150 works in oils and 600 drawings to Palestine. Now you will find a, a photo from Palestine where he stay, stayed from six months. There you have this passport, or you the passport, in the place of passport from uh, English, uh, uh, from the English consulate. Uh, in, with 
his, uh, uh, with Clara Goldschlager, his uh, wife, and the two daughters, Josine and Daddy, Zichronam Libracha. And uh, uh, you have here the visa, the English visa, and also the Turkish visa, and uh, uh, marriage certificate that includes the same that were not born in uh, cit uh, Romanian citizen, but you find here mosaic religion, mosaic religion between him and the, do and the grandfather of, grandmother of uh, Miki that you spoke. Now you have all the stuff he took with him, 2,200 kilos with all the things he brought to Palestine. All that, all that they took you, you find here, it's about 1940. You see here, that proves that everything was prepared before it. Now the pogrom. In the pogrom, in uh, 21, 23 of January, 1941, um, Mishu Gottschalk Kostin was killed, his brother-in-law. Here you have the uh, design made by Marcel Yanku. And after that, Marcel Yanku, he wrote a lot about that in this uh, about, uh, he wrote a document first uh, in Romanian, I say in English also, Pogromul di Romania of Austria massacre or in masse. The program of Romania was a series of mass massacres whose only fragments were trans, only a fragment were translated in Hebrew in English in the catalog was On the Age, organized by Young Kodada Museum in 1990. But before that, in 1981, it was a book, a green book, on the age the same with uh, this drawings of Marcel Yanku in together with poems of different Israeli poems, Bialik, Chernochovsky, Pagis, and so on, is the homage for an homage for Marcel Yanku. Marcel Yanku wrote it and also drew this, all these uh, drawings about this pogrom. He speaks in the text about Rabbi Gutman and his sons. The sons were, two sons were killed during the pogrom at Jilava. Now you will have a very important design, the Jews in a slaughterhouse killed by the legionnaires with the rotten kosher here. Other paintings also. The genocide that Mr. Mendelssohn presented to you from 1945 in Palestine, the OLS came, and he said, the situation was before coming. In my art and Zionism, I repeat the name, which was published in Israel in 1980. He said, the situation is worse and worse. I had absolutely to read the quickest possible. I was just being condemned for the guilt to having been born a Jew. I decided myself to Palestine. As an, in Palestine, as an architect, he built two villas. We have only one today. This is from this time. And now, in these days, in Herzliya, that's only the villa it rested. And uh, Mr. Mendelssohn presented Le Poilu from Israel Museum. That's the difference from the period he hated the war and everything, and the period he felt himself engaged. You, he, you see all the all his painter prove that he was engaged. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Dadia, Mrs. Dadianku said to me that he painted Israeli soldiers and he cried. You see here a series of the parents that never march you find at the Tel Aviv Museum, also a work very important who, uh, from uh, the 80s. The Maccabees, he painted a lot about the uh, uh, tradition, Bible thema, temps, and the defense of Jerusalem, black markets, the local color, Wandering Jew, Ma Barat. In 1988, uh, the uh, Eretz Israel Museum uh, made an exhibition, the War of Independence Israeli Art, and the cover is uh, of Marcel Yanku, sure, influenced by Guernica, by Picasso, the death of the soldier in 1949. The conclusion is Marcel Yanku found in the immigration to Palestine, not only as founder, not only as uh, uh, of Hakim Hadashim, New Horizons that he did together with everything, but also as teacher, as pedagogue in Enhod, in 
who, uh, who developed so much. He was really a Jew, an Israeli and Zionist, and he solved his dilemma. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I am, uh, though this, is a, this was a tragic, sad event, I am thrilled that we were able to be together here uh, in order to not forget the victims of the Bucharest pogrom, in between uh, uh, whom was uh, Mishu Goldschlager Kostin, one of the 123 uh, martyrs who were killed, as I said, simply because they were Jews. Also, I am happy that we were able to uh, bring back the memory of uh, Marcel Iancu as a preeminent uh, Romanian architect and artist and a preeminent Israeli artist. Uh, I truly, truly uh, enjoyed, if I may use this word, this event, because uh, although it's a virtual one, we were able to be together. And I'm confident that, uh, as I already said, we will continue to work together uh, because uh, there is so much common ground. Let me finish by uh, thanking you once more and assuring you that Romania, at least at its government level, uh, at its, uh, uh, the level of its parliament, the level of its president, it's committed to fight against anti-Semitism, Holocaust denial, not only through words, but through legislation and through important institutions uh, which are being de developed in Romania for this very purpose. I thank you once more and I wish you a nice evening. Goodbye.